guys welcome to comfy cozy up so it's a new week and we're gonna be doing a reading vlog so I did start off with some of the project sewing project sewing project that is simple but tedious for some reason but hopefully I can finish this this week because it's literally just the neckline that's done and the hem in the bottom um, but the arm piece was a little problem but we'll figure it out <laughs> so how um i did over the weekend give you a little rundown um after somebody said to me i probably should read it, they didn't say i should they said they mentioned the book animal farm and i'm like i never read animal farm yes i'm that one person that's probably never read animal farm shame on me we're just gonna acknowledge that so of course I went to pick it up at the bookstore and a shame on me for not reading this. I love it. Like why did no one tell me how good this was? <laughs> um, I mean I've heard it so many times talked about but I never really like paid attention to what it was about. It's just I heard mention of the book. And um, now George Orwell, I have 1984 sitting up on my shelf bookshelf and you guys have seen it I've, I haven't read that either but I've always said I'm gonna read it but this which was such a short read it's it's a short read guys so small the book is so good and I get why they said to read to that why they referenced this and why I should have read this before I get into the next book or book which is um, glory which is Novalet Bolowale. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on the proper pronunciation. Let me know if I if I, if I got close. <laughs> so, yeah, I see the pig. Is the pig on here? Yeah, the pig butt. <laughs> and they got the, the pig over the moon here. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to talk about. I, I don't know if I even need to talk about this because if you haven't read Animal Farm. I'm, I thought I was the only one. I just, I'm assuming everybody's read this. But this is literally animals that basically got their, 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 they want their little freedom and they want to govern themselves on this farm. They call the farm Animal Farm. Um, but it's a very much a political book of talking about how history repeats itself and how um, people in power can manipulate um, what was agreed upon as far as how they were governed themselves and you think of money you think of of um of working labor um, all that stuff that you need in order to maintain a society and so you get this in this but this was such a clever one because the the characters in this are animals and um and different animals in this the pigs are the one that are basically running the show and and you have reference to others so it becomes entertaining but at the same time the message is clearly there and the metaphor is clearly there and so when i got into to this one i'm i'm entertained guys i am very entertained by this book i am very entertained but in a way it's also very powerful very powerful um, there's a particular line in this that went on and on and on and it was just gave me chills just thinking about it but I'm also laughing because we got this same in, in, in essence of society it's a country um, Jadada called Jadada ruled by this horse that has been ruling for decades and he's not willing to give up his power so there was a coup to get him out and the rebel at the time was uh, a donkey but why the donkey had to be a woman <laughs> why the donkey had to be a woman and so basically after that there's this whole idea of we're gonna have a fair and just voting system we're gonna select our next leader based on blah 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 but it gives you bits and pieces of different society in our in our world and how they're represented by this these characters that are animals that that 
essentially. Um, but you see different things. They see the mockery of even the U.S., our country right now that we live in. The the whole the the the, the, the little the shenanigans of the, the political system that we're in right now, and it 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 is a bit of a mockery on it. But it's, it's done in a way that you have to scratch your head because you want to laugh about the nonsense that's happening now. But it's such a serious thing because it's affecting all of us in some form. But it's done in a way where I had to chuckle a couple of times because I'm hoping 10, 15, 20 years from now, when you know I'm old and I'm looking back and I, and I just look at the time period in this country when it was just pure nonsense and pure just just gibberish going on that don't that you know and it's it, it a character uh in this that when you talk about um where it's like the whole religious thing that's coming up in this as well like how to get people to worship you as a politician that was clever in this but i'm literally um, less than 200 pages ago. It, it reads fast for me um, because I'm enjoying it so much. There is a character called Destiny. She's a goat. And she's a returning to Jadada. And the, 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 the changes that she's seeing and the experience that she's having with these people, I'm very entertained. I also like the cat, Duchess. Duchess is just very much wisdom. She was spitting some truth <laughs> of the stuff that's going on, especially when she was talking about to the sheep that this Lord, I was just like, yeah, I just love that there's animals being used, but it gets more entertaining when I realize what animal is going to represent who, and I'm like laughing like, oh my God, but the donkey thing, I cannot get over the donkey, the donkey and, and the mongrel. <laughs> get past that because I'm like why the woman you know why the woman gotta be the dog <laughs> this but that's where I'm at so then I picked up two more books from the booker so I pick up, pick up the colony and this is um Audrey uh McGee and the cover I'm just staring at the cover I never really looked at the cover when it was handed to me this art, it's beautiful. And then I also picked this book up, Small Things Like These, Claire Keegan. Now, when the woman gave me this book, I said, what the rest of it? <laughs> I was like, what, what the rest? This, look at this. All the other chunky books I've read, like, look at this and then you know she made a comment i said that's so true she said sometimes those small books can be very powerful and i said you know what she got something going on there and i started like just reading the first couple of pages but i said you know what let me stop sorry let me stop because this is a, a, a literally a one sitting kind of deal so i think i'm gonna save this for saturday um or friday when i'm off and literally just read it in a day and um and get it over with like that because it's so small I, I don't think i need to break this book up i think i just need to be in that one zone and just read it so that's what i have so that would be eight i still have booth but booth is so long that i know booth's gonna take me a minute um to read it just looks thick and it's a historical fiction but i'm gonna finish this guys in this because i love it I ain't even gonna lie. I'm entertained. I am entertained. I'm so entertained. And she's, she's clever. And I was so nervous about this. I really thought this was gonna be the one that's gonna be challenge me the most as far as the writing style and the storyline because it's, it's African um, folklore. And, you know, me and that kind of don't really. But honestly, it's such an easy read that I'm literally like, oh, this. And then I'm enjoying it because there's so much entertainment going on in it. But yeah. So, all right, I'm going to do some journaling and we'll on to the next.
Hey guys, welcome to Comfy Cozy Up. So, finished my dress. I finished my dress. <laughs> so, I'll just put some pictures up because I'm definitely taking some pictures after this, but I'll put them in here so that I can show this off, you know. The only thing about this dress is the fabric is thin. So, I gotta get my wear out of it <laughs> before it gets cold. Um, but this is my tester. I typically get cheap fabric to test because I'm still practicing. Um, especially um, when it comes to stuff to do with my bus size I'm still practicing so but I love this dress it's just so simple and cute and it's just very summer very much a date night kind of dress so I'm gonna take a couple pictures but y'all I already got lotion cuz I'm all oiled up <laughs> on this dress so I'm like I gotta wash it again but nonetheless, y'all will see me in this dress at least two, three times before the summer's out. So let's talk about Glory by Novella Novella Bulo Bulawea. I think I got it. And you guys know this started off because I had to get to Animal Farm. Absolutely love this. And I definitely see the influence, this inspiration for this on here. Now this is what I would say uh, a, a mixture of different political unrest issues that relates to politics, whether it is um, rights, voting rights, there is that whole idea of um, uh, the struggles of people and what they want in order to have a society that is fair and also um, protecting them as far as them being able to live. So you have 
in this like I felt like the author took bits and pieces of different political revolution um, and puts it together in the storyline where you can see a country you can relate to it from your country point of view um, as a person as Jamaican you think about when election comes up and the shenanigans that goes on when election times is around and what people are doing and, and how politicians get for people to be to praise them and to get them to do certain things what I liked about this is it touched on different areas of the love for one country and it also touched on how sometimes when you fight for one thing you get something else that you didn't expect because this was told in a way of a old horse who didn't want to give up power and a coup that happened and that situation um, ultimately put him in exile and the person the, the, the donkey and then this person came up in power who became even worse who became a, a sort of a dictator and in many mongrels and, and everybody else um, and then they, you have the returning now that is the most powerful point of this book is the returning and it's sad because there's a particular um, um, I think he was a was he a cow I think he was a cow, but he was a doctor. And this idea of going away to a different country and studying and wanting to come back to your people and uh, take care of your people and you are faced with uh, something that prevents you from doing that and the struggle. And there's that part where he had a discussion with his wife and this that was just like, oh. you you felt her pain, but you also felt his because... In, in, in reality, everybody wants a better life, but you see what his intentions were and how it didn't work out the way he wanted to. That was just hard. There was also the other returnee, Destiny, who flee and came back and to see, um, she's an adult, she flee when very young, and she's a gold, but then you, you, her storyline, her family generation, and how she is connected to the revolution, and there is that, powerful moment where words becomes powerful and how it affected her and how it the tragedy surrounding it that was such a good writing moment that part of the story I was like yo this author she she was in her moment when she was writing this I am such because I'm, I'm I love the writing process and I'm learning so much about the writing process when authors are able to do things like that in books it's like I really want to get in their mind and like how did you get to that moment that you write that kind of of a uh, part of the story that really like grab you I mean she snatched you up on that part I am such a lover of this book and I really didn't think I was gonna like it because it is folklore it's also told the characters are animal, but it's done in a way that you, f you forget the animals in this because of the, how reality is so clean and clear for us human and what we're dealing with. Especially when she talks about the politics in the U.S. and how it affects other parts of the world. And it, it made me even realize that as much as when they use the, the old horse and then you think of the fact that we are allowing men who are damn near 80 that should be <laughs> in a uh, senior citizen community going on vacation exploring the world not trying to run the world and reality is if this was our grandparents we would not want them to be doing that we would want them to be relaxing to go on vacation and do stuff how are we allowing this kind of age group to make those kind of important decisions and we, we have moments where we talk about elderly and we joke about it we might say how their memory is not that sharp their decision is very old school they don't see modern take but we don't see that in politics that's just so weird but this is a politics book this is a book that would stir emotion it would stir emotion even religion is 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 in this she touched on everything she might piss a few people off but it is reality for a lot of countries who are still having unrest there's a particular old lady that was said she she don't know what peace is and that was just like how many people in other countries can relate to that 
would never know a peep. Born in revolution, born in consistent war, born in consistent political turnovers, and never know what true peace is. And you think about that in this story. It is a powerful book. It is done in a way to make you, I think, walk into it with a little bit more ease because of the, the fact that it's animals that's used as correct as um, characters. But it's it's very powerful. It is very much aha moments. There's very much shaking your head like yes. There's very much sadness in this. But there's moments where you laugh because of how when you think of what we're dealing with, some of it is laughable. But it's, it comes with consequence. So you you, you kind of can't be in that humor mode too long because you're like, yeah, but somebody's suffering because of this. You know, that kind of deal. But it's in this. Because there's a few times where I have to chuckle at the characters and, and, and what animal they use for the character. The crocodile, the donkey, <laughs> the mongrels. <laughs> so, yeah. But I'm a, I'm a yes. So far, book number five. And I am not disappointed yet. I think the bookers this year is really going for um, writing style. Because the writing style in this is also one that captures you. It is very much a unique um, um, take of being creative with your writing. These are all creative writers so far that for me, I notice it. Maybe someone who is typically see books like this might not notice this. But because I do read pretty much different genres and different kind of storyline I noticed the writing style in these books and I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying the creativity of this storyline and so far none has disappointed me where I hate the book or I feel a certain way they all have something about the book that makes them special and I'm hoping it continues because I still have what eight more to go and I am definitely gonna read probably about two this weekend because I have two smaller ones and I still do have booths which is big but it's a historical fiction but you know I like historic, historical fiction so we'll see but I definitely keep going and hopefully I can read at least all of them by the time the shortlist is released and then hopefully when the shortlist release I've read all of them <laughs> like last year how I think the shortlist came out and I think I've only read two books on there so I had four that I had to read that I didn't get to but so far I am very much loving the booker so far uh, maybe it's just me let me know if you're reading the booker list if you're enjoying it um, this year because I'm enjoying this so anyway guys I'm going to end this here I'm going to go outside get a little photo photo of this cute little thing that I got on throw it in the washing machine again because it's going to be worn it's going to be one. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I will see you in the next one. All right, guys.